The most embarrassed I've ever felt is when I was 19 and pregnant and a nurse told her colleague in front of me that I did not deserve to be a parent because I was poor. She has no idea how much that changed my life. I went to nursing school myself as a single mom and one year into my career found myself extremely burnt out. I tried a few different specialties and then in the place that you would least expect it, I not only found a job I loved, but I found life again by caring for dying patients. The stories and advice I was getting from people who had lived their entire lives was changing my life and I thought maybe it'll change yours too. I started sharing these stories on social media and writing them into a book in the hopes that it might help people with their fear of death. That book changed enough people's lives to be on the New York Times bestseller list for five weeks straight and has sold almost 100,000 copies. Now, we're opening a nonprofit hospice house where caregivers are taken care of and no one is ever turned away or made to feel less than for their financial status. I think there's two types of role models. I think there are people who you wanna be just like and equally important. I think there are people who show us exactly how we don't wanna be and I have made sure that no patient under my care has ever felt the way that that nurse made me feel. Five signs that you have what I call good girl trauma. And by the way, this is gonna explain why you're a binge and emotional eater. So keep watching. Coming in at number one, you believe that you have to be nice in order to be loved. Because as a young girl, you had to change how you behave and who you are in order to be accepted and loved. So you started to believe that you're not good enough as you are. And now your self-worth is dependent on other people's happiness. Number two, you struggle to say no because you've been raised to put everybody else's needs and emotions before your own. So you believe that if you set a boundary and say no, then people will stop liking you. They'll see you as rude and you'll lose your good girl image, leaving you alone and unloved. Number three, you set really high standards for yourself. From a very young age, women have been taught that they have to act a certain way and look a certain way in order to be accepted and loved. So you've become a people pleaser, a perfectionist, and a high achiever. Deep down, you believe that you're not good enough unless you're perfect. Number four, you don't really know who you are anymore. As a good girl, you've molded yourself into the person that you think society wants you to be to please others and not disappoint them and not be judged for who you really are. And you've lost yourself in that process. And number five, you have an unhealthy relationship to food in your body. Most binge and emotional eaters that I work with have good girl trauma because you think it's your job to fix everybody else's problems and take care of their emotions and their needs and you neglect your own. So food has become your escape, a way to numb out, to stuff down all of your unprocessed emotions and your unmet needs. I saw this video the other day that was like, I have autism and I either don't have to pee or I really, really have to pee right now and there's no in between. And I screamed because I know why that happens. Interoception is your awareness of internal signals from your body. It's how you know if you're hungry, if you have to go to the bathroom, if your heart's beating really fast and so on. Different people have different levels of interoception. You and your friend could get the exact same injury at the exact same time. Your friend might feel it right away, but you might not notice until the next day when you see a bruise on your hand and say, oh, my hand does kind of hurt. Guess what, guess what, guess what? Here's the crazy part. Interoception is very closely correlated with both neurodivergence and mental illness. People diagnosed with autism tend to have very complicated relationships with interoception. On average, people with autism are more sensitive to internal signals, but less likely to accurately identify them. Are you ever having a really bad day and you don't know why, and then you have a snack and realize you were literally just hungry? So your body knew you weren't feeling good, and your heightened interoception meant that you really weren't feeling good. But you didn't know you were hungry because the signals you got from your body weren't specific enough. You have high sensitivity for internal signals, but low accuracy for pinpointing the actual cause. I read an article that connected this to the social difficulties that can come with having 
having autism. Quote, it is difficult to understand another person's perspective when we struggle to understand our own embodied experience. So when that girl posted that video about how her bladder goes from zero to 100, I think she was right to correlate that with being neurodivergent. And I think interoception is a huge piece of the puzzle that so many of us are missing. There haven't been very many studies published on autism and interoception. So if anybody watching this needs a dissertation topic, Different. I'm not different. Am I? I guess he's just different. Wake up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm just different, apparently. Mom, I found a rock. Oh, wow. Okay, but put it down because we're going home. No, it's mine. It's my pet. It has feelings. I can't just leave it here. Please let me take it home. Morgan, what are you doing? What are you looking at? I'm looking at the pictures in the ceiling. That one kind of looks like a dog. What? I, you know, like the paintbrush strokes in the ceiling and they look like patterns and you can kind of see things in them. Okay, but let's not do that right now. Pay attention. Hi, Morgan. How are you today? Oh, she does this sometimes. I don't know why. I think she's just overwhelmed. Morgan, if you can't say hi back to the nice lady, just wave, okay? Okay, class, pay extra close attention to these directions that I'm about to give you. It's super important. Pay super close attention. Okay, I got it. I wonder what we're doing. Ooh, maybe it's like last time where it was a scavenger hunt and the winners got candy. I could really go for some candy right now. Wait, did I eat lunch? All right, and those are the directions, so let's get started. Crap, I was paying attention. This is the police, Okay, petition for shows to have to have a two episode grace period if the network decides to cancel them. Because there are so many shows that are abruptly canceled after like one season, two season, that end on the biggest cliffhanger and then there's never a renewed season and you never know how it ended. And even if the ratings weren't amazing, there were people who watched this show. And I feel like if a network, if a streaming service decides to let a show go, there has to be a final two episodes, not a full season, but a final two grace period episode arc that allows the writers and the people who actually enjoyed the show to bring it to a close and to bring everything together and to wrap up that story. Like I just finished watching Witches of East End and it was so good. I loved the show. I got invested in the characters. I got invested in the story. I don't know what the ratings were 10 years ago when it premiered. All I know is this really good story with these really connectable characters and it ended on the most juicy, open-ended cliffhanger on so many levels and it would have had the best season three and i watched the ending knowing that all the questions i have all the worries i've developed will never be answered and i think it's such a disservice that like maybe there weren't tens of millions of people that were watching it but there were people at the time and now who are invested in this really good story that simply because it was canceled we will never know the ending to and we will never get closure about you want to talk about things keeping you up at night that keeps me up at night because this show came out 10 years ago so even if they wanted to make a season three, the actors themselves have developed 10 years into their life. So I am watching this ending, loving this show, connecting to the characters, knowing that any answer, any cliffhanger, any plot line that I want to know how it ends and what happens will never be known. I'm still mad about Veronica Mars. I was going through a full Veronica Mars binge, one of my favorite television shows of all time, and it gets to this cliffhanger on the end of season three. And then when I click to the next episode, boom, it's the reboot from a couple of years ago, decades in the future. Not even like you're sitting there watching this show like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next season. I'm going to have to wait a year until I find out. You're never going to find out. It's never going to happen because in real life, 
they canceled the show. And especially with streaming services and things like that, allowing people to rewatch shows later on that might not have been super popular at the time, but gain a following later. I just feel like for every show, no matter what, you should give it a one, two episode grace arc where you allow that story to come to a close simply for the people who do invest their time and did watch that show to have a content ending and to bring everything together and be able to move on. Oops, got your coping skills. Now let's see what we got. That's not a coping skill. September now, how sick. Let's recap August real quick. Miss Swift is now Miss Size Mick. I show speeds now, I show dick sporting goods, profits drop. Addison Ray came to say pop. Katie and a 83 year old fought. Trump debuted that new mug shot. Scooter's clients scooted out. A drop of rain made a scream and shout. Levitated like Dua for some clout. Kanye in a boat with his ass out. We all cracked up at his crack. Lizzo sues her old backups back. Bad bunny stunning in his thirst traps. Gaze flooding all the Call of Duty maps. Singer of a low stops her show. Mitch froze again, can't let it go. New song by Miss Alex Russo. Hashtag free my boy Mitchell Musso. Kylie and Timothy still cuffing. So is Tori, got caught bluffing. Britney's family is still sucking. Harry Styles and James Corden are friends. Just, they're just really good friends. For anyone who's not, who doesn't know this or hasn't heard it, filming a sex scene is not sexy. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's just not. It looks great hopefully because it's been coordinated and all these other things and um but it's been and it's been rehearsed but those moments are contrived so they don't feel like that when you're watching it and then the second that you know cuts called there's someone walking in with a with a, a robe and it's just like they're not fun they're not like a sexy fun thing to be shooting so i don't i think it's when you're watching it that that can feel because it's cut and made Cutting to look and, beautiful. and music and yeah and you're supposed to see the chemistry lighting. between those characters mm -hmm. i mean we he, I, th I think they're uncomfortable to watch. I can understand that. Yeah. I have a weird thing where I, I feel very much like I'm watching the character version you of like him. You like it? Yeah, I kind <laughs> of like, I'm like, I, it doesn't really bug me. <laughs> I did an acting class with him and he was like full on, like hot and heavy with a girl in front of me while we're doing this, you know, this course together. Yeah. And I was so in it and I'm just like, I rose my, I rose my hand after and I was just like, I'm just happy I get to take him home tonight. <laughs> so. You've all been missing, presumed dead for five and a half years. Air to approach. Montego Air 828, level 1, 5000. This is New York Approach. Uh, repeat your call sign, please. We are MA 828. Repeat. Montego Air 828, Montego Bay to JFK. Copy that? Can I get your name, Captain, and the number of passengers and crew on your manifest? Uh, this is Captain William Daly. We have 191 souls on board all of whom would love to touch down on one of your runways. Sorry, folks, apologies and a half. We are diverting to Stewart Airport up in Newburgh, spitting distance from the city, but for any of those who are trying to make a connecting flight, we owe you one. Flight attendants, prepare for landing. People, welcome to New York, where local time is 11.49 p.m. On behalf of your flight crew, we'd like to thank you all for flying Montego Air. Seriously, no service? Same. And the inconvenience continues. We've been asked to deplane right here on the tarmac. Who's Daly? When do they ever do this? Never. Something's happening. Excuse me, there are sick people here. What exactly is the problem? The problem, ladies and gentlemen, is your plane departed Montego Bay, Jamaica on April 7th, 2013. Today is November 4th, 2018. 
You've all been missing, presumed dead for five and a half years.